Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. This is the big one. Watch out for it. It's coming your way. It's coming soon. Don't miss it. Yes, it's coming now. It's here. Oh, it's gone again. Just, <laughs> just as well I didn't laugh at anyone. There's something you'll like even less. It's round the hall. <laughs> Well, hello again. As everybody knows, today is smear a traffic warden in bloater paste for Asia Day. <laughs> and to commemorate it in fitting style, London has pulled out all the stops. There's spotted Dick crouching at all hallows without. <laughs> There'll be the all comers Paso Doble jockey wagging at the five minute hippo wash in the coal shed at Lords, while the over 80s nudist trampoline team. <laughs> We'll be holding their annual hedgehog squat. <laughs> That's for charity, of course. And I only hope that the hedgehogs can be prevailed upon to enter into the spirit of the occasion. <laughs> All right, Smith, make the announcement. And now, Armpit Theatre presents A Tale of the Orient and the quest for an idol so valuable that men would rob, cheat, lie for it. Yes, men would stoop to anything to possess it. Not the Golden Rose of Montreux. <laughs> no, it's the story of... The Maltese Brass Monkey. My name is Captain Bear's Breath McNee Grasper. <laughs> Known in all the ports of the China Sea as Mad Alice Cudlip. <laughs> for reasons I won't go into here... Or indeed anywhere without first consulting a solicitor. <laughs> Every dockside loafer in Macau is familiar with my tug, the SS Mrs. Mahatma Fortinbras, named after my first mate. <laughs> my story opens in September 1946. I'd put in for repairs and made my way to the rickshaw rank on the quayside. Oh, how there, sailor? You want rickshaw? Never before sundown, thank oh. you. Oh. You want good pull-up for sailors? I've told you never before sundown. Take me to the celestial palace of a thousand delights. Oh, yes, Mrs. Buggins gap. Oh, jump in. <laughs> Welcome to the Hotel of a Thousand Delights. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I want a single delight with bath. <laughs> that unless I follow me. Anything I can do for you, please ring. You're sweet. Yeah, you're pretty nice, too. <laughs> it was good to be ashore. I hadn't felt my legs on land for a long while. Or anybody else's, for that matter. <laughs> I undressed and lay on my bed looking up my bazooka. <laughs> there were many things I wanted to see in Macau, but first I thought I'd better clean up. I started with the reference to Baedeker making it perfectly clear that it was a travel guide. Then I stepped into the shower. Suddenly I felt something in the small of my back. I turned. I was looking down the muzzle of a mouser. This pussy cat is loaded. <laughs> One false move when you get it, Captain Bear's breath with me grasper. I didn't know my name. Just a lucky guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come, follow me. He pressed his top waistcoat button and a secret panel in his riding breeches swung open. <laughs> follow me, he said, and disappeared through it. <laughs> I followed down his leg and into his boot. I should point out they were very baggy riding breeches. Soon we emerged into the light and I found myself in a large antechamber. There in front of me, sitting on a vast carved throne, was a huge, impassive, Buddha-like figure. He sniffed a grape and nibbled an orchid. Greetings. My name is Lo Min Sing. Yes, I've seen you mincing along the waterfront. <laughs> Welcome to my humble abode, Captain McNee Grasper. You know my name? I know all about you. Educated at a country parsonage in Haifa, a first at Cambridge, a second at Oxford, and a third at Kenton Park. <laughs> yes, you are cashiered from Sandhurst and usherated from the Regal Canning Town. 
Oh, you are now an illicit stand-up runner. Yes. You see, <laughs> you see, I have a bulky dossier for a man of my size. <laughs> you seem to know everything about me, what you want of me. I'm told that you will do most things for money. That's a lie. I'd do anything for money. <laughs> would you even steal the Maltese brass monkey? The Maltese brass monkey? It's here? Yes, here, in Macau. In Macau? Yes, Macau! Follow me in here. Why did you bring me in here? To get away from that flaming orchestra. <laughs> Now, listen to me. If you can bring me the Maltese brass monkey, I shall pay you a vast sum of money. But I must have it tonight. What? The Maltese brass monkey. <laughs> oh, get out, Brayton. <laughs> now then, Minsing, uh, what are you going to do with the, uh, you, you know what? I have friends in Moscow. They will pay me well for it. But I must get the brass monkey there before the cold weather. Well, I'm your man. <laughs> Don't worry, Mincing. I'll find the Maltese brass monkey. I said I'll find the Maltese brass monkey. Oh, sorry, Ken. One, two. I hurried back to my hotel, but there in my room a surprise awaited me. On the bed was something I had never expected to see. A clean bedspread. <laughs> And on it, the seductive curves and the smooth, flawless yellow skin of a banana. <laughs> the girl eating it looked up. She spoke. My name is Tiger Lily. Any relation to Beatrice Lily? <laughs> when I heard you were in town, Captain McNeigrasta, I had to come and see you. Well, why? I'd never seen anyone called McNeigrasta. <laughs> what do you want of me? You just left Lomin Singh at his place halfway up page 14. Oh, how'd you know that? I was watching you disguised as a paper clip. Yes, you could have fooled anybody. Don't get to the Maltese brass monkey from Insing. He wants it for his own evil ends. But he's promised me a, a princely figure. And I'm sick of the one I've got. Get, get the monkey for me. Get it for me. I'll give you everything I got. Well, how much money is that? I'm not talking about money. <laughs> I can give you a woman's love. Oh. Oh, all right then. But you know my terms. Uh, so much down and a little every week. <laughs> Good. Then go to this address tonight. Here. On this card. What's this? Messrs. Hong Kong Wong and Levine Oriental Plastic Novelties Limited. <laughs> Incorporating renter sampan and turf accountants. Our motto, you win when you lose with Hong Kong Wong and Levine. Licensed annually by the Westminster County Tong. <laughs> ah, well, I'll get over there right away. Ah, here we are. Hong Kong Wong and Levine. Hello, can I help you? Ah, Mr. Levine? No, I'm Hong Kong Wong. <laughs> if you think that's ridiculous, you should see Levine. <laughs> Did I call him? No, it's you I've come to see, Hong Kong Wong. Well, in that case, may I offer you the traditional oriental greeting? May the celestial radiance shine on you. May your concubines be fruitful and be a delight to you in the sunset of your life. My life already. <laughs> More I cannot wish you, and well over the fast. And the inscrutable Oriental bowed and disappeared into the back of the shop, returning shortly with the traditional teacups. So sit down, have a cup of tea. You fancy perhaps a piece of cheesecake? You feel the chop suey? <laughs> Sweet and sour matzo balls? <laughs> No, I just had some, thanks so much. Um, let's get down to business. I want the Maltese brass monkey. Brass monkeys he wants. Brass monkeys I ain't got. How about the nice Maltese brass orangutan? I've got a glut of them. No, thank you. It must be the Maltese brass monkey. I'm willing to pay well. Hmm. I'll well, come back midnight. I might be able to help. No. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be dangerous. But I'll do me best. <laughs> that night, accompanied by Tiger Lily, I returned to the shop. 
It was in darkness. We lit a joss, and in his flickering light we saw... A crumpled heap. It was Hong Kong Wong. Is he dead? Yes, I'm afraid someone's done Wong. And look! <laughs> look, look! The safe has been ransacked. Yes, whoever killed Wong has got the Maltese brass monkey. Shh! What's that? I looked around me. In the flickering light, the grotesque shadows danced, accompanying Cliff Richard, of course. <laughs> Then suddenly a huge chopper flashed in the gloom and buried itself in the woodwork by my head. Look out! Look out, Captain McNee Grasper! But it was too late. My assailant came at me with a curious oriental gait. He leapt over it and hung one on me. Ah, what do you think? Well, it looked better hanging on you. You've got the neck for it. I warn you, I am an expert in karate. I'm a black belt of the second dan. You mean? Yes, I'm Dan Dan the karate man. <laughs> He grabbed my lapels in judo fashion. Hmm, nice bit of smutter. Hong <laughs> Kong Wong, you and alive. Well, if you could call this living. <laughs> but I'm not Hong Kong Wong. I am Min Sing Zayde. Camp Chiki. <laughs> he came at me, swinging with his handbag. <laughs> I threw a punch at him. He retaliated with a judo throw. We went at it, punch and judo. <laughs> then, with a quick gesture, he threw me two feet in the air. Then, with two elbows and my head. He juggled them deftly. Do what? Don't worry. He's as deft as a post. I'm going to let you have it. Are you sure? Yes, I finished with it. Oh, it's nice. What is it? A right hook. Ow! And he collapsed in a bundle on the floor, tied himself up with string, and posted himself to the house of Min Sing. And we followed by the next post. We meet again. Yes, you fiend. Uh -huh. I know now you've been using me as a cat's paw. That wasn't the part of the cat I had in mind. <laughs> off with his head and then off with the rest of him. Not so fast. I have a loaded question here and I'm not afraid to ask you. You wouldn't. You would not dare. Oh, wouldn't I? Here goes. Have you ever had an embarrassing experience? Yes, Wilfred. I was in the Gordon Islands. <laughs> you see. I was in the Gordon Islanders, you see, and one day I was going up the stairs of this, of this bus when this woman with a French loaf... Yes, yes. 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 All right. All right, give him the money, Mabel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what's in the jackpot? A uh, Arthur Welsh rabbit, six pennies a piece pudding, a Queen Scout's woggle, and the Maltese brass monkey. Well, grab it and run. Right. Yes. No, not the peas pudding, the brass monkey. Now, run. Ah, uh, come back. Stop, stop that cheating, you I can't go much further. Never mind, we're nearly at the harbor. There's a junk waiting for our getaway. But there are so many. Which one? Which one? Well, it doesn't matter. You can get away with any old junk around the hall. <laughs> And just to prove that was no idle boast, here are the Fraser Hayes Four, or as they're described in the script every week, the f -f -f. So here, ladies and gentlemen, to sing Soon It's Gonna Rain are the f -f -f -f. Go streaming by 
smell how the velvet rain is falling out where the fields are warm and dry. Now is the time to run inside and stay. Now is the time to find a hideaway. Color supplement. First on the fashion scene, Daphne Whitethigh. Hello. <laughs> Uniforms are still high fashion, and anyone who wants to be in the forefront is wearing one. I had a letter recently which said, Dear Daphne, the other night I put on my old military uniform and tagged along with a crowd in the King's Road, similarly dressed. Imagine my surprise when the next morning I found myself on patrol in Singapore. <laughs> what do you advise? Signed, 2nd Lieutenant Mary Quant, Brigade of Guard. <laughs> well, my advice is keep your eyeshadow to the minimum and nobody will notice. <laughs> I have one last piece of fashion news. A top designer tells me that although bosoms are still out, there's a rumour in haute couture circles that they may be on their way back. And I shall keep a light burning in the window. <laughs> Come home, bosoms, all is forgiven. <laughs> and thank you, Daphne Whitepine. And hello again to the Sunday night TV personality, Seamus Android, the man who has his audience riveted to their seats. It's the only way you can keep him in the studio. <laughs> Come in, Seamus. Well, now. Hello. Ha-ha. <laughs> All right. Hello. Ha-ha. <laughs> well, now. All right. Well, we'll come back to that later. <laughs> but meanwhile, here is a young singing star who is not only young, but by the time I remember her name, she'll be extremely old. <laughs> so when I say Silla Black, you'll all know I mean Dusty Springfield, or do I mean Tom Jones? No, it's Spike Milligan with her latest recording. Uh, uh, no, well, anyway, whoever she is, here she is at last. Gone. And with that, it's good night. <laughs> Thank you, Seamus Andrew. Now, the colour supplement turns its attention to English and animals. It's often said, and with justification, that the English love animals. Nothing delights the English heart as much as a little lamb. A few green peas and a quantity of green corn. <laughs> of course, the cinema has often used the call of the wild as a theme for major epics. And now here now is a scene from one such film, a story of the bush entitled, Where No Hippos Fly. <laughs> Which is uh, just as well, really, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, it stars Dame Celia Mulstrangler, an aging juvenile, Binky Huckaback. Charles, Charles, I'm frightened. Steady, old girl. <laughs> you can smell fear. Are you, are you sorry you brought me out here? To the bush? <laughs> yes. I know the bush is no place for a woman, but we've been happy here, haven't we? Happy, Charles. Who knows what happiness is? 
It's giving and taking and having and holding and loving and needing and wanting and feeling. <laughs> yes, Fiona. It's all of those things and yet none of them. And yet all of them. And yet none of them. And yet all of them. Oh, all right. Some of them. Charles, are we safe here in the bush? Quite safe. But look, look over there. There's another of those creatures. Uh, he's an ugly brute. Look at that snout on him. Those little red eyes. Don't move. I think he's seen us. Oh, Charles. Don't worry. I'll take care of him. Stand your ground. I think he's going to charge us. Good evening, Constable. <laughs> Just leaving the park. Come along, Fiona. And of all the songs about animals, none are more common than ditties of the hunt. Here now to offend against reason is rambling Sid Rumpo. Hello, my dear ears. I'm good. I'm singing your song of that great huntsman, Jim Pubes, who lived many years ago. And... Thank you. <laughs> and it is said there was no finer sight in Cumberland than to see old Jim straddling his nadger behind the parsonage and, and, then, and then looming his turves before setting off in pursuit of a quarry. And this song tells his story and goes after this fashion. <clears throat> Do you ken Jim Pubes with his flood so bright as he traddles his nadger in the bright moonlight? He whirls his posset all through the night, but he can't turn it off in the morning. <laughs> oh, the sound of his groat threw me from my bed as he blew up his moody pitch awakened the dead. Oh, the noise of his grunge nearly blew off me head and removed all the paint from the awning. <laughs> Do you ken Jim Pubes? Now his blood's turned white and his nadge has been struck with an awful blight and he can't find his posset without a light <laughs> and he can't turn it on in the morning. Oh, his poor old groat, it has sprung a leaf, and the sound of his moolies reduced to a squeak. Though he blows, and he blows, till he's blue in the eek, we'll no more hear him grunge in the morning. It's sad to think that the good people of Cumberland can no longer hear Jim Cubes grunging in the morning. Still, at least now they'll get a good line, won't they? You know, I always thought that fox hunting was the prerogative of the wealthy few. So I was amazed when I saw an advertisement in my copy of Peekaboo Corset's Pictorial. <laughs> well, I buy it for the spot the ball contest. <laughs> And the advertisement read, The Boner Hunt come trolling after the fox with us in the specially selected groups. Well, it sounded just what I wanted, so I hurried over to the address in Carnaby Street as fast as my lallies would carry me. Hello, anybody there? Oh, hello, I'm Judy, and this is my friend Sandy. Oh, hello! Oh, it's Mr. Oh, hello! Oh, Oh, yes. Telly O'Ducky. Yes. yes. Oh, we are your actual Carnaby Hunt. We are. You see, Jewels MFH, and I'm the whipper in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 And yes. Uh, very nice you look too, now. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many of you are there in the hunt? Mm -hmm. oh, I was just saying to me so far. And of course, Reynard. Oh, the fox. Yes. Rain no, Ducky, no. <laughs> Reynard Lispoon, the choreographer. He's a close personal, isn't he, Jules? Oh. Close. Oh. Close. 
very intimate. Very intimate. On team, you mean? On team. I mean, intimate, really. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Person. Yes. Get on very well with him. Mm. He's your type. He's all butch. Yes. About <laughs> mm. mm. questing. Oh yes. Mm. <laughs> Now, you must have seen his work, Mr. Orne. He does fantastic things on the television. Oh. Yes, you know, they all come trolling on in form hugging black and do evocative things with chairs and ladders and planks of wood. Mm. Mm. He once done something with a bent wood chair that made Robert Elton's eyes stand out like organs. <laughs> <laughs> True. 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 There's no fault for standing so close. <laughs> Of course, of uh, course, Reynard is classical trained. Oh, yes, yes. Classical trained. Indeed, train. he's got your... Uh, <laughs> he's got your full classical there. Mm. Started in John Cranko's Nutcracker and worked his way up. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. He's, uh, he supported Dame Margot's Sleeping Beauty when Nuriev backed out. That's right. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. lovely. I'm sure, and he's the only other member of the hunt, is he? So far, but we're hoping to attract a show business clientele. I see. Where do you hunt from? Oh, here, yeah, in Carnaby Street. Mm. Oh, but, the, but there can't be many foxes in Carnaby Street. No, not foxes. It's not what you call a plethora of foxes round here, is there? But you still have the thrill of the chase. The chase? But, I mean, uh, what can you find to chase in Carnaby Street? He's very jejun, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You don't. Oh, I don't. It's a quality I admire in him. Do you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Would that I still had it. Mm. <laughs> oh, who's on les nays d'antan, Mr. Horn? Mm. That is your actual philosophical French, yeah. that is. Mm. So don't brood, you. Mm. Don't brood. Mm. You're brooding. I'm not. Wow. No, you'll get lines. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, Mr. Horn, you ready for the off, then? Yes. Mm, just put this pink coat on, then. These breeches. Yes, and these bijou bootettes. Right, there we are. Oh, oh. There. Now, you're all dressed. Now, uh, what, what happens now? Oh, we just wait here till we've to the quarry. Oh, look, there he goes. They're after him. Yeah, but, but what, about, what about the horse? What horse? Jump on Jewel's back. Yo, yo, tell you. Oh, 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 We chased the ginger furry creature down the road. <laughs> Unfortunately, it turned out to be Mick Jagger in a fun fur. <laughs> he went to earth in a gent's boutique calling itself the Gay Hussar, and I didn't have the nerve to go in after him. Jewel and I were merely hanging about on that street corner trying to pick up another scent when the policeman came along. <laughs> and that, gentlemen of the jury concludes my speech for the defense. <laughs> Cheerio, see you next week. That was Round the Horn, starring Kenneth Horn, with Kenneth Williams, Hugh Paddock, Betty Marsden, and Bill Pertwee. On the musical side, you heard the Fraser Hayes Four and Edwin Braden and the Hornblowers. The script was written by Barry Chalk and Marty Feldman, and the program was produced by John Simmons.